Refreshing tabular models can be a tedious task. In this episode, learn how to use multiple Azure services to automate the process. Learn more in this episode of Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed MVP Edition. Today, I'm joined by Gaston. And before we get started, Gaston, why don't you tell us a little bit more about what it is that you do? OK, and I, I'm really excited to be here uh, today. Uh, well, my, my name is Gaston Cruz. I am a Microsoft MVP in Data Platform. And I've been working as a senior principal within Slalom uh, company. And I've been running kind of uh, different architectures, design, and running uh, Microsoft Center of Excellence for, for Slalom globally. And uh, I recently moved with my family from Uruguay, South America. Uh, I, I've been engaged with the different uh, leaders and communities uh, in South America, let's say Uruguay, Argentina, Brazil, Peru, uh, Colombia, Chile. So I've been involved, really engaged with uh, those communities. And also, uh, since I moved here to, to Bellevue, uh, I start kind of a the YouTube channel with some polls uh, trying to connect Microsoft Corp with some leaderships from South America. So that, that is kind of a weekly introduction for myself. Awesome. Cool. Well, we're really excited to, to have you here today. And, and we'll put a link for our viewers to your YouTube channel so they can go learn more if they, they like. Now, today we're going to be talking about refreshing tabular models and some easy ways to do that. And this is something I don't know a ton about. I'm actually relatively new to this space. Um, so Gaston, I'm really looking forward to learning from you, you know, what are some of the common scenarios and what are some solutions that that you have. So I'll just kind of ask you to kind of take it away and, and show us and teach us and we'll learn together. Sounds great. Sounds great. Okay, this is kind of a common uh, scenario where I, I, I've been shopping with different clients and uh, talking about Okay, what is the best practice in terms of refreshing data models that you can uh, deploy in, let's say, Azure Analysis Services? Uh, so that being said, and this is kind of a scenario where you want to create a solution for your data models, uh, as you know, and I can briefly introduce the introduction to the introduction on that end, in terms of if you have multiple models, let's say you, you deploy a semantic layer in National Analysis Services because you have multiple users that they want to run different reports, let's say in Power BI, accessing those data models. And uh, in some way, you need to refresh the data coming to your semantic model. Your semantic model can have a data source coming from Azure SQL DB, or let's say Azure Data Lake, or let's say a legacy system like SAP or, or Salesforce. So you can actually combine those data sources in Azure Analytics Services. You can deploy models using, let's say, SQL Data Tools from Visual Studio. And then after you deploy your model, you need to refresh those models with the up-to-date information coming from those data sources. So I will be talking a little bit here uh, in terms of this architecture where we are going to jump into different Azure data services, like the, the app registration to uh, refresh the model, not using a naming account, using a service principal account, then using logic apps to access the REST API of Azure Analytics Services and doing the uh, refresh modeling. And then with Azure Data Factory, you can uh, provide a trigger uh, orchestration when you can say, OK, let's have a refresh of our data model every day at 6 a.m. That is kind of a briefly the introduction of this architectural design that where we can jump and say, OK, this is one of the ways that we, we have to refresh those data models. So I'm going to bring here my Azure portal. Uh, let's say that, that I have one uh, uh, analysis services uh, deployed. And you can see here that I have multiple models in my Azure analysis services. You can see here at the end of the screen that I have three different data models running in my server. And then I have. Uh, for example, different options in terms of how we can access those data models. One option, of course, is going directly with SQL Management Studio. And from Management Studio, I can connect to those data models. In this case, I have 
one data model here that lives in my SQL Management Studio. I am connecting from SQL Management Studio to my Azure Analysis Services. And as you can see, I have multiple tables living in my data model. So in this case, in this scenario, what I'm saying is to provide a way to refresh this data model and have all these tables coming with the latest data, in this case, I'm connecting to an Azure SQL database to provide and to create a semantic layer. If I want to refresh, let's say, the customer table or the product table or the address table, I need a way to, uh, in some way, refresh that data model in a way where we can set up a process to every day have the up-to-date information. Uh, one manual way is, of course, go into the table, right-click, and process that table or go into the data model, right click and process the database. Or if you have millions of rows, let's say you have uh, a fact table and you need to provide a way to refresh uh, just a partition of that table, you can go to that table and right click, go to partitions and only process the partition itself. From here, you can see if you have multiple partitions, if we are going to have multiple rows. So with this option, you can process only that partition. That is the manual way to do things. But let's go with our case. If I want to refresh the data model using different Azure data services, what I can do is, first of all, I need to provide one app registration. This is my app registration. And why I am calling the app registration? Because I don't want that Gaston is going to be the name account to refresh my data model. I want to provide a service account that can refresh the data model. So when I create this app registration, I have my client ID, my tenant ID, I provide a certificate to have this secure layer here where I can provide that uh, account with the security to process my data model. And at the same time, I need to provide to that account to give API permissions to process my data model. As you can see here, I add some permissions to my Azure Analysis Services saying, okay, I want to provide read and write to this account to refresh the data model. So this is the way you can refresh the data model using this kind of accounts, and this is how and why we are creating the app registration to provide that refresh of the data model. Then, what I'm showing here is I create a logic apps that this logic app is accessing, and this is really cool way to go with logic apps and send an HTTP request and use this action. This is just one action in my logic apps. This is an HTTP action that what I am doing here is provide a URL for my analysis services and running this REST API call. In this case, as you can see, I am refreshing one partition for the sales address table and I am refreshing the table customers and I am refreshing the table product. So I am saying with Logic Apps, I am refreshing three different tables of my Azure Analytics service. Where I can jump and how uh, I bring all these details of accessing my Azure Analytics services, I am showing here, there's a link that I, we can provide that link. This is the link to access the REST API of Azure Analytics services. So this is what I am using right now to do the authentication from Logic Apps and to run the process, as you can see the body that I'm using to refresh my data model. So I am accessing directly from Logic Apps to the REST API of Azure Analytics Service to do the refresh. And last but not least, uh, what I'm doing after that, of course, I can run the Logic Apps directly from here to see that my model is running and up to date. But at the same time, I can bring another services like Azure Data Factory that allow me to connect directly, and this is my Azure Data Factory uh, process 
where I just move only one activity, the, the activity that I move is just a web action. And this web action in the settings is just calling, this is the URL of my logic apps. So this URL, and I can show briefly, if you can see my logic apps, this URL is the one I provide from Azure Data Factory. So from Azure Data Factory, I'm calling these logic apps via this URL, and that allow me to trigger from Azure Data Factory the logic app. What is the advantage to do that? I can set up a trigger here from Azure Data Factory to say, okay, this trigger is going to just, let me edit here, and as you can see, I can set up the refresh directly from here. I can say, okay, from this trigger, I can refresh the model, let's say every day or every hour. So you can see the recurrence here. You can set up every minute, every hour, every day, every week. So that is one of the ways that we can address to have the automation of the process of the entire data model. That is just kind of an introduction that we did here to understand what's going on in my Azure Analysis Services, how we connect to different data sources from Azure Analysis Services, and how we deploy a solution where we can have all my data models up to date without any manual effort. Cool, this was really cool. I, I haven't seen a lot of these things used together before, but if I, if I just kind of recap what you did, you showed us how to create a service principle that can be then used to kind of access this Azure Analysis Services, then use logic apps to create uh, a way to update specific things that you want updated, and then you use Azure Data Factory to actually trigger those updates from the logic app with the service principle you created on whatever schedule it is that, that you set. Now, that's really cool. Did I get that quite right? <laughs> exactly. You just summarized exactly what we did today. Awesome, very cool. Now, you know, this seems like a great way if your data source might be Azure SQL database, like I think it might've been in this case, but what if you had other data sources? Can you do something similar or what do you advise? That is a really great question, uh, Anna. And you know, uh, right now with Azure Analytics Services, our semantic layer and with different tools, one of them is Visual Studio Data Tools. Uh, and with SQL Data Tools, what you can do is just go with Visual Studio and add different data sources to create your semantic model in, uh, and then deploy to Azure Analytics Services. So let's say that you, you don't have only Azure SQL Database, you have Azure SQL Database, you have a Cosmos DB, you have uh, different uh, Spark uh, pools, you have data lakes, and you can provide that add all those data sources to your semantic models. You can create those relationships to connect different data sources and then create measures, create relationships, and then deploy that data model to Azure and services, and then start ramping up with these kind of solutions to update information. Wow, that's, that's awesome. It's really great that you can kind of use it for multiple data sources. And also, you know, you made it look pretty simple to set up. So I think I might be able to go try this myself. Um, you know, Gaston, thanks so much for joining us on the show today. It was great to have you. We'll provide a link to our viewers in the uh, description so you can go try this out yourself and set up what Gaston has set up and showed us today. And if you like this video, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed.